Good morning, and now for a few announcements before we begin Mass. Our second collection today is for our Parish Maintenance Fund, which keeps our church and grounds clean and beautiful. All Are Welcome meets this Wednesday, April the 10th at 6 p.m. in the Parish Activity Center. The Little White Books, a collection of daily Easter reflections, are now available in the church office for a $1 donation. Join the Owls for their spring luncheon on Thursday, April the 11th, after 12 noon Mass in the Parish Activity Center. It will be great food and fellowship. Men's Axe Retreat registration is now open. The retreat is May 2nd through the 5th. And please take home and read your copy of the bulletin. I have seen the Lord, I have heard his voice, and I know he lives, and I know he lives. Death, where is your sin? Fear, where is your grief? Hearts now free to love, lives now free to live. Those who speak the truth may be bound in chains, but there is no chaining the whole I have seen the Lord, I have heard his voice, and I know he lives, and I know he lives. Death, where is your sin? now free to live. Good morning and welcome to Our Lady of Mercy in the celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday, the octave of Easter. We extend a special welcome to all newcomers and visitors, and we also welcome those who are live streaming us from home, those watching us on television. And please join us for coffee and donuts in the coffee shop after Mass. The holy sacrifice of this Mass is being offered today for Scott Litz and Frank Messina Jr., Percy and Paul, Chris and Susan Moise, Gary Alford, Mary Lou Roos, Vincent and Grace Marino, and Michael S. Stevenson III. As a community of faith, let us now stand and join our voices as we sing our entrance hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 516. That's Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 516. Jesus Christ is risen today.
gathering together on this beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord gives to us on this uh, Divine Mercy Sunday when we are mindful that the Lord extends uh, his mercy and forgiveness and calls us to be reconciled to him and so now in the joy of this Easter season the Lord is risen the tomb is empty Jesus has conquered even sin and death. And so we begin now our Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Gathering now together to make holy the day of the Lord. Let us then pause now to prepare ourselves by calling to mind our own sinfulness and to ask our Heavenly Father for His mercy and forgiveness. Most merciful Jesus, you pour out your love as a font of mercy for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Most compassionate Jesus, you receive all those who have separated themselves from you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Most merciful Jesus, you envelop the whole world and empty yourself upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest and on earth
let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your very own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, by whose blood we have been redeemed. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. 
and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he, had showed, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive or forgiven them, whose sins you retain or retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, though the, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands. And bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
one of the passages of scripture that was most powerful for me this weekend was uh, from uh, the second reading today. And uh, that's what I'd like to focus on this morning. And the scripture so beautifully says, uh, for the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. Now, you know, every year on this Sunday after Easter, we hear the exact same passage of, from the Gospel of St. John. We hear today in the Gospel the story about Jesus' appearance to doubting Thomas. And you know the word Thomas means twin, so who do you think the other twin is? Uh, that would be you and me. And of course, you know, it's a very familiar story to all of us, poor doubting Thomas. And of course, on top of that, it provides a lot of good source material for the clergy to preach on today. And many preachers often choose to focus on Thomas and on the nature of belief, what it is, how we come to it, those sorts of things. And being a priest for 40 years, uh, I have preached on those very topics many times. And it's uh, pretty important stuff. I mean, after all, it's the very first line of the creed that we pray every Sunday, isn't it? I believe in God. And week after week, we stand together and we declare and reaffirm our beliefs in God. Of course, uh, just saying the words uh, doesn't mean that we necessarily believe. Nor does it mean that we all agree on what the word believe even means. To believe in God is not something that can be described. To believe in God is not something that can be explained or understood very easily. I mean, it's really a, a rather deep mystery that goes way beyond the limits of our language and probably our intellects as well. But it is tremendously important and the fact that you and I will never understand it completely doesn't mean that we shouldn't reflect on it, contemplate what it means to believe. It's probably why the church has us read, you know, this passage of the gospel of Doubting Thomas year after year after year. Now, as you well know, you know, for the Christian belief in God means uh, belief in God the Father. For the Christian belief in God means uh, belief in God uh, the Son, Jesus. It means uh, belief in God the Holy Spirit. And yet uh, we know that there is only one God. Imagine that, another tenet of our faith that cannot be explained away, though through some sort of complicated theological gymnastics, we believe in a triune God. That is a deep mystery. One God in three separate individual divine persons. It's why we crossed ourselves with the triune God when we began Mass today. I guess we could say that belief in God uh, in its most simple form uh, is the acceptance that something or someone is behind everything we see and everything we experience. And I think it's kind of neat right now because, you know, uh, for some people, you know, a belief in God could be as simple as the fact that, well, they know there's something bigger than me out there, and he put all of this into motion, and there is a certainly a divine design behind everything. Otherwise, why would we be all fascinated to see the eclipse on Monday? <laughs> 
I mean, uh, belief in God uh, can be as simple as something or someone is behind everything we see and everything we experience. It's the kind of belief that comes about, you know, when people reflect on the world around them and conclude that existence cannot be some sort of accident. Even scientists, people in the medical field, I mean, they see that there is a design behind so many things that are discovered. That something way beyond ourselves must be responsible for the very existence of everything. And quite honestly, you know, many people who do not accept any sort of system of belief or any faith tradition do often believe at least in this sort of way. That it's akin to saying, well, I don't really know who God is or I don't even know what God expects of me. But I do believe there is a God. I do believe in a power beyond myself responsible for all of creation, what we can see and even what you and I cannot see. And really, you know, for people who have at least arrived at that point, I think we should never be dismissive of anyone who expresses belief in God in this way. Because it's the same God the same voice is speaking to them who is speaking to you and me. The same God gifting them with faith who gifts you and me with faith. And I'm talking to a church full of people who believe and believe deeply. And yet whether we believe in God in a simple way or whether our belief in God, we believe in a more complicated way, we come to believe in God in an effortless way, or maybe we've come to believe in God only after a whole lot of soul searching, or whether we come to understand God in a very confident way, or whether we've come to acknowledge God in a way that's accompanied by a whole lot of serious doubts, you know, it, well, no matter how we've come to our conclusion about believing in God, you know, when you think about it, however, it doesn't really demand that much from you and me. At least on the surface, it doesn't. Because I can look around the world, think to myself, okay, somebody must have made all of this, and then I can go back to doing whatever I was doing before. My belief doesn't have to make me live any different way. My belief doesn't have to make me live in a certain way if I don't want it to. Unless if believing isn't quite as simple as I have made it out to be. Now, you know, there was uh, an article uh, in the Wall Street Journal written just a few days before Easter, and the article was written by Cardinal Dolan of New York. And I must confess, I am a big fan of Cardinal Dolan in New York. And in his article, you know, he writes, he says, faith, faith is deeply personal, but it is not private. He says, faith, faith by its very nature is communal. That a congregation is a spiritual family. And members of a spiritual family likewise bear an obligation to remain a part of that family, just like you and I are obligated to our own families. And he says, faith must always be internalized, yes, but faith has to always be expressed. It has to be strengthened. It has to be lived out with others. 
And he says that today and the, the, the times in which we live and, you know, everybody who does a Pew Research today will tell you the same thing. He goes on to say today, however, we realize that people tell us they want to believe, but they don't want to belong. People want to believe, but they don't want to belong. People say, oh, they want faith, but... They don't want religion. People say they want spirituality, but they don't want to be religious. They want God as father as long as they are the only child. Oh, they want Jesus as the good shepherd as long as um, I'm the only lamb in the flock. It's as if people today want God, but they want God by themselves. Oh, everybody wants little Jesus, but they don't want his church. And the cardinal goes on to say that, sorry, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, my friends, uh, we may say with relative ease, I believe in God. But underneath those simple words is something more profound, something more personal, something more demanding. You see, our faith invites you and me to take the next step to expand what it means to believe. And we do that by not just believing in our God, but also embracing and accepting a much deeper kind of commitment. For when we as Catholics say that we believe, we're also saying, I believe and I love the God I believe in. And I want to know God and I want to serve the God I believe in. And that, my friends, is something altogether different. That we love the God we say we believe in. And that we want to know him and that we want to serve him. For love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And you see, my friends, that's when belief in God leads to challenge. That's when our belief in God leads to serious responsibilities. That's when our belief in God leads to an action on our part, our response to a God who has shown you and me just how much he loves us and how merciful he is to us and how he is willing to yet to let you and me start over and over and over again with him how generous he is to you and me how god does not give me what i deserve but he is extravagantly generous with me and how understanding and compassionate and patient he is with me and it is this profound realization of how incredible our God is, revealed perfectly in the person of Jesus, that becomes the catalyst for all we say and all we do. It's what enabled those early disciples through the power of the Holy Spirit to not simply remain behind those locked doors and think about who Jesus was. Rather, it was their deep faith and their desire to return his love for them, to return love for love that gave them the courage to put into practice the love that Jesus had shown them. And the world has never been the same. Um, of course, you know, when we hear that we ought to keep God's commandments, we must be careful to not simply just think of the Ten Commandments, even though that is immeasurably important. 
Of course it's important to keep those in the broadest sense, but keeping God's commandments with the small c means listening to that voice of God that is within you and me. Listening to our God who whispers to you and me in the recesses of our hearts, helping us to form our consciences and to understand a little more clearly right from wrong. That is the fullest sense, my friends, of what it means to believe. Because just coming here and warm in a pew for an hour and mumbling the words, I believe, that ain't changing a whole lot of nothing. And so this morning, we want our voices to join with those of Thomas to acknowledge Jesus and to be able to say with him, my Lord and my God. But let's not let our belief end there. Let us step out as the disciples did, sharing God's great love and demonstrating the depth of our belief. The depth of our belief through our countless acts of goodness and kindness and generosity and mercy and love <laughs> yes we all came here to say I believe in God <laughs> but when we say those words uh, what you and I really mean is is that and I want to love the God that I believe in <laughs> And I want to know that God, and I want to serve that God with all my being. And so, my friends, uh, there you go. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. Amen. Together we pray our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that our Heavenly Father hears all of our prayers, we now place our petitions before him. For the continued leadership and spiritual guidance of Francis, our Pope, for his humility and service to all the faithful, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the peace of Jesus in our world and in our hearts. 
for all those affected by terrorism, war, violence, and crime. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick in body, mind, or soul, for the healing of Jesus, the divine physician, may our sufferings be united to the cross of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the Church will rededicate herself to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy for all who are far from God, the Church, and the sacraments. May they come to know the mercy, forgiveness, and tenderness of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the women of our parish making the Acts retreat this weekend, May the Holy Spirit deepen their relationship with Jesus, renew their vocations as wives, mothers, and single women of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died and now sleep in Christ, especially Deacon Mike Agnello, Charlie Tuye, Wade Labat, Susie Vincent, Randy Cascio, Bob Greer, for all the souls in purgatory and for all those on the mercy prayer line, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people who gather in faith before you. We have come because we believe in you and your love for us and the call that you have given each of us in the waters of our baptism. Pour your grace upon us and renew your life within us. Strengthen us when we are filled with doubt that our trust may always be placed in your Son, Jesus, who has risen and conquered even sin and death. We ask all these things in his holy name. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father, the Almighty. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those you have brought to new birth in the waters of baptism, that all of us may confess by our baptism in your Son, Jesus, we may attain unending happiness. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For Jesus is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, by rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise as we sing together the unending hymn of your glory. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this, this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, the Blessed Apostles, St. Faustina, St. Thomas, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now stand to draw in our voices as together we pray the prayer our Savior Jesus has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Grand time. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ keep me safe for everlasting life. Amen.
Please join us in singing from your Red Worship hymnal, We Walk by Faith, number 674. That's We Walk by Faith, number 674. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God now bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we uh, dismiss uh, this morning, I do want to give a special shout out to some visitors who are joining us from New Jersey. I want to welcome in a very special way all the members of the Mistretta family who came from New Jersey. Um, uh, their son and brother Antonio married Lizzie Bukovic. And so um, Lizzie, who has such a beautiful voice, and uh, her sisters sing in the choir. So that was an awesome celebration of the sacrament of marriage yesterday. So to Antonio and Lizzie Mistretta, and to all your families, a great big congratulations and God's blessing. Can we give them a shout out? <laughs> I know by now you prayed up an appetite. Please join us for uh, donuts uh, in the coffee shop immediately following Mass. Have a great rest of this Divine Mercy Sunday. The Lord is so good to you and me. Our celebration of the Eucharist at Our Lady of Mercy has now come to an end. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.
shall behold. 